Well, hello there, internet. It's been a while. I'm really, really sorry. It's been a long time since I posted. There were all sorts of camera issues and busyness issues and laziness issues, because let's get real, I probably could have fixed my camera issues a lot faster than I did. But I am back now and really excited to share for the next few weeks a few spring DIYs. Now, my favorite spring activity of all time has to be reading. I mean, after you've been cooped up for a really long time inside, all of a sudden the weather starts getting nice, it's sunny, and you wanna go outside and get some reading done. And the book I've been reading on my break has been this book, Level Up Your Life by Steve Cam. Now, I love Steve's blog, Nerd Fitness. I've been following a lot of his nutrition and exercise advice for a good long time. And I'm excited about this book because it's a little more focusing on general productivity and general happiness rather than just focusing on fitness kind of stuff. Um, it's a fantastic book and it inspired a DIY that I've been using for the last couple of weeks to get myself back on track after my random stint of laziness. So I'm excited to share with you my DIY and also a couple of tips from Steve's book to help get you motivated if you're also in a slump like I am. All right, I wanna start by talking about the content of Steve's book. I'm not gonna give the whole thing away, but I did wanna pull out some of the big ideas that were meaningful to me as I've been reading them. So Steve starts by talking about goal setting in the book, right? And one of the things that he talks about is how any goal that you set is going to have one, two, three phases. In the first phase, this is where you're planning, you're doing a lot of self-development, you're really working on uh, yourself and getting your plan into action. Phase two is where you are actually taking those small regular steps in order to achieve your goal. And finally, in phase three, you have achieved your goal, huzzah. Now, here's the thing. Steve really talks about how it is not phase one or phase three where we are going to be the happiest. In fact, chances are if we're focusing only on phase one, that planning phase, and we're not making any progress, we're really going to be hurting ourselves and hurting our happiness, right? This is because of something called the progress principle which says that we need to be making, or feel like we're making, small, steady steps towards reaching a goal if we want to feel like we are successful. The next thing that he talks about is how phase three, once you've actually achieved these goals, isn't gonna make you that happy either. And the reason is because of the adaption level phenomenon. I had to think about that for a sec, because <laughs> they sound kind of similar. So in the adoption level phenomenon, um, basically states that your brain is constantly adjusting to all kinds of circumstances. And even if you're given a really, really good new circumstance, like winning the lottery, once your brain and your lifestyle sort of adapts to that on a daily basis, your happiness level is going to plateau. Now, what Steve says is that there is actually a system that all of us know about that both allows us to make small, steady wins towards a new goal, towards a new level, and constantly asks us to move up levels uh, as we're moving through them, and that is games, right? So one of the things that he talks about is how gamifying your life can actually be really, really effective in terms of building in uh, not just a much happier lifestyle, but also in terms of making you feel successful and like you're making progress. So I wanted to share with you just three tips from the book that were really meaningful to me in getting out of my own lazy slump. Tip number one, create your player character or alter ego. Now, in many stories uh, that begin with a hero, it often starts with them creating some sort of secret identity that is about to go on a big adventure. And what's fabulous about uh, thinking of ourselves like characters at the beginning of a story is that we all know that the hero at the beginning of a story, yeah, he's supposed to suck. Like, that's just kind of a known fact. You haven't gone through all the trials and tribulations yet. You haven't built all the skills. And so the fact that we may not be good at everything is expected. It helps us to disassociate ourselves and where we sort of currently are in our goal setting process from any kind of external judgment that we might be putting on ourselves. Number two is to create quests and assign yourself experience points. One of the problems that we often have with big goals is not breaking them into small manageable chunks. So if for instance you have a goal that you would like to read every single day, then you might want to break that goal up into various mini quests to keep it interesting. You could start, for example, picking up a book just for five minutes every single day, and at the end of two weeks, you can assign yourself maybe five experience points in order to keep you motivated. 
Another thing that you can do um, is try to pick out uh, some quests that'll make what you're actually doing really interesting. So for example, picking an author and assigning yourself a couple of experience points uh, every time you finish one of their new books so that you've read everything that they've ever written, right? It'd be a fun little quest for you to do. Or give yourself some points for going to a new author's reading and experiencing someone brand new on the scene. Giving yourself these fun quests keeps you motivated towards these larger goals that can sometimes feel insurmountable. Tip number three was a huge aha I had while reading the book. So one of the things that Steve talks about is how as you gain all of these experience points, you're going to want to figure out how many uh, points you need in order to reach different levels. At each level, many times the main character gets some kind of reward for achieving a new level. This happens all the time, but a lot of times the rewards that we pick are not actually in line with the behaviors that we're trying to set out. I am so guilty of this. I love giving myself a day off when I've worked really hard or letting myself go eat whatever I want at a fancy restaurant if I've been really good and exercised all week. But when we think about rewards, rewards should be something that help us further progress on our quest. So new running shoes, for example, if you're exercising, or maybe a new book if you're someone who's interested in reading. By focusing a little bit more on uh, how our rewards can help us level up and thinking of them as gear on our quest, rather than something just to pamper ourselves, we can get a lot farther. Well, thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my three tips from Steve Kahn's Level Up Your Life. If you're looking for more happiness and productivity hacks, definitely be sure to check out the rest of the book. Um, it really goes into a lot of detail about how to set up your system and also how to make it a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, I have a DIY to show you that was inspired by the book that I've been using for the last couple of weeks, and it really has helped me up my productivity. So let's jump right in.